Botany Manor is a gorgeous first-person puzzle game set in a Victorian English manor in the late 1800s. In this title, you play as a retired botanist working to complete her research book on forgotten flora in a relaxing and peaceful environment. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone, and today I will be taking a first look at Botany Manor's full release. It is available now on Steam, Nintendo Switch, Xbox Series, Xbox One, and Game Pass. So feel free to check the game out if you'd like to play alongside me. A very special thanks to the team at Whitethorn Games for providing me with an early review key. And without any further ado, let's get right into the gameplay. Lady Arabella, we're so happy to have you back at Botany Manor. I hope you had a lovely trip. In your absence, I'm afraid some things in the manor have deteriorated, though I can assure you we've tried our best to keep things in order. I hope it doesn't affect your research too much today. And we have a parcel. <gasps> can I open it? Oh, this is our forgotten flora book, A Herbarium by Arabella Green. So we are going to be working to complete this. Dear Arabella Green, thank you once again for submitting your book proposal, Forgotten Flora. Please send this empty herbarium back to us once you've completed your research and we'll be in touch with a potential offer. Sincerely, Mayflower Publishing House. Okay, our girl's trying to get published. Let's go. Let's make it happen for her. I have been so excited to play the full release of this game. They've had a couple demos available that I've loved. A fresh start. How perfect. One new plant added already. All right. Somerset falls victim to industrial smog. I can barely see. Horse bus drivers refuse to work in these conditions. We're going back in time. We got a postcard as well from Marianne. Dearest Arabella, on my hike, I came across the windmill wart, a flower that only grows in Sicily. Some locals told me the flower has air purifying qualities, but due to its bespoke temperature requirements, the plant rarely blooms. Maybe the flower could help with the smog pollution in your conservatory. Your friend and peer, Marianne. So that hints us towards a flower we have to grow because look at how foggy it is in here. So we should add a clue, the postcard. That's our first clue for this. We have two more clues to find for the windmill wart. I want to grow the windmill wart to filter the smoggy air in my conservatory, but I'll need to research its temperature requirements first. This is the seed. Look at it. It's cute. It records what the seed looks like too. And here we have potting instructions. So how to actually pot a plant, place the pot on a saucer, add soil, plant a seed, water it. I can certainly do that. We have a pot. We have some soil. I guess we can use the seed here. Windmill wart. And we will water it. So it has sprouted. We have to get it to bloom. I want this in my, well, I don't have a conservatory, but <laughs> maybe one day, dream big, right? Shoot for the stars. So here we have some different wild flowers, uh, which the windmill wart is the one we're trying to grow. So that's a volcanic flower, meaning it's gonna have to have some spicy temperatures. Uh, here are the ideal soil temperatures for Mediterranean wildflowers. Uh, so the postcard said Sicily, and it's a volcanic flower and that is 60 degrees Celsius. So let's see if we can add those clues. We have the wildflower chart and the temperature chart. Excellent, we've completed that part of the page and we're gonna bring it over here. And then we have to get this vent to the right temperature. So that was 60 degrees Celsius, all the way up, all the way up, hot, hot, hot. And then we're gonna open the vent and wait. Let it work its magic. Let it grow, let it bloom. Oh, she's so pretty. There's the windmill wart. Very aptly named. I love how it's spinning like a pinwheel. <gasps> Perfect. We got our first achievement as well. The windmill wart naturally grows in volcanic soil, which is why it requires a soil temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. The bud contains air purifying qualities so the flower can filter its environment from dense smog. So there we go, we completed our first set of pages in the herbarium. I love this flower. Look how bright and vibrant it is in here now that we've cleared that smog. I love all the succulents too. The purple is so purple. Let's head out. 
into the gardens. Gorgeous, gorgeous. We're gonna go through here. The music is so lovely too. We have our entrance to the, the grounds. We're gonna explore. You can totally take your time with this game. You do not need to rush anything. You're gonna explore every little nook and cranny. Home of the Green family. Oh, we left a, a little note for visitors that says, I'm currently busy researching. Please leave all deliveries in the gatehouse and ring the bell. Good to know. Uh, oh, here's some keys. Entrance garden. Okay. And a post box in case we get mail. This is a incredible property. This is like bucket list. Honestly, this would be too big for me, but it's still beautiful. I'd have to be hosting all the time. I'd have to have a big family and like 17 Dachshunds. Look at the manor. The soundtrack is so relaxing yet triumphant. Also, little fun fact, you guys. If you're loving the vibes and you just want to chill, just take a seat. Just take a seat, take a break, and have a sip of your beverage. Stay hydrated. So, we might want to get the lay of the land. I mean, we can explore around the gardens if we'd like to. There's definitely no shortage of little areas to explore. Now, this is locked from the other side, which puts us at a stopping point there. But that's good to know for us to return to in the future. Look at these little hidden areas. <gasps> oh. Letter from Eleanor. My dear friend, good luck on your trip. I would have loved to join you like in our younger days, but your tales about the trip will suffice when we next meet. I will never forget the Maria Jackson passage you once highlighted to me. In examining plates, you take the authority of others, whereas in botany, as in all other things, we can make little progress if we do not see for ourselves. Well, now you must travel and see some interesting specimens for yourself. I'm inspired and looking forward to hearing all about it. Your friend, Eleanor. Okay, we have some tea as well. Can I have some tea? Oh, I have my walking stick and my hat. It seems like I like to sit here a lot. Well, who wouldn't want to? It's such a quaint and cozy little corner. Okay, so there are little secrets hidden around, some lore. Oh, the orchard. It's locked. Okay. I mean, I'm sure it wants us to go into the manor, but you guys know me. And if you don't, now you know. I like looking for little secrets. I like looking in the spots that the game doesn't prompt you to go to. Because there's often little things hidden there. Okay, so we have our seed station. Another one here. Oh, look at the... Look at the duck. Quack, quack. We got an achievement for that. Okay, good to know. I think this game is going to reward us for exploring. It seems. Let's pop in here. I feel like I probably could have actually explored the grounds even further, but I feel like we're going to go back out there. A letter from sister. My dearest Arabella, I hope this letter finds you well as you set off for London on your important trip. The thought of you in the bustling city working on your ambitions both excites and worries me. Time is indeed past, and yet your determination for your field remains inspiring to me. I never imagined all those years ago that we would be writing to each other in our fifth decade about such endeavors. Okay, we're 50. We're in our 50s. I look forward to hearing about your progress, and of course, let me know how I can be of assistance upon your return. Your loving sister, Elizabeth. Sounds like we have a pretty good relationship. Let's head through this door. Survivors of Adversity, Chapter 2. <gasps> Two new plants added. Look at how cozy the fireplace looks. Now, it doesn't look cozy as this. This looks like it needs to be healed or something. It does not look good. Oh, we have our bags packed. A train ticket to London Paddington, issued for return journey first class. Wow, we're fancy. I mean, we'd have to be with a property like this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, elderly discount applied though. Chapter two. Okay, so the Fulguria and the Ash Plume. We have a lot of clues to find. Okay, good to know. So these are the two new flowers that we will come across as we explore. We have another letter. 
Lady Arabella Green, I'm pleased to let you know that your family tree is complete, carefully tracing the history of your lineage. As per your request, I have altered the customary presentation, now displaying the maiden names of the ladies in your family, rather than their current names acquired through marriage. Should you require any further adjustments or have additional inquiries, I remain at your service. Yours, Robert Hinchley, genealogist. I don't know why that's making me, like, suddenly emotional. But we love a woman in science uh, in the late 1800s. This is going to be such an interesting story uh, to follow. So I'm excited. Um, and how lovely. It looks so nice. It looks so nice. That's us there with our sister, Elizabeth Ann Green. Our parents are Adelaide and Augustus. Looks like we have a niece as well. So if we go this way. Hmm. Travel by train to Dartmoor all the year round. The kitchen. Kitchen is locked. Let me in. Oh, we got an achievement for shaking a locked door. I love surprise achievements like that. Especially ones that reward exploration and just trying things. Pyrophile's book. Fire has the potential to be among the most devastating forces of nature. Despite this, humans have developed the ability to invent, wield, and attempt to manage it. Meanwhile, certain species in the plant kingdom have evolved to adapt and flourish in the face of fire. In areas where forest fires occur frequently, pyrophiles have learned to rely on fire as a crucial part of their life cycle. Facts about pyrophiles. Their seeds typically possess tough shells. Some pyrophiles only bloom when surrounded by smoke aromas from their natural habitat. Okay, can we add that to our... I guess we don't know which one yet is the... is the pyrophile, but ash plume kind of sounds like it could be. Hold on, what does it say here? This might be a tough case to crack. Okay, and this one says I came across the Fulgari when I was caught in a terrible thunderstorm. Okay, and this is a clue? This was a clue. Travel by train to Dartmoor, home to breathtaking sights. Okay, I don't know which flower that belongs to yet, but we do have the clue. Okay, this takes us into another room. The art of painting. This takes us to a dining room. Oh my gosh, this house is, well, I shouldn't call it a house, it's a manor. And it certainly is at that. The views, so many places to sit. Ooh, folklore book. Some ancient Celtic tribes practiced a coming-of-age ritual. This meant that when someone was considered old enough, it was time to prove themselves worthy of staying in the tribe. One of these rituals involved picking a flower in the woods, though not just any flower, of course. The gatherer had to find a fulgaria, for this flower is known to only bloom during thunderstorms. Keeping a cool head while lightning flashes were striking left and right of you was considered the ultimate test of courage. Okay, that is a clue for the fulgaria. So it only grows during thunderstorms with lightning. So we're gonna probably need flashes of, of light of some sort. A photograph. Oh, that's Arabella and Elizabeth. That's us and our sister. I wanna sit in every chair. I wonder if there's an achievement for doing that. Your new Lumen photographic flash lamp. Fill the container with flash powder. Close the container. Press the button connected to the camera. Witness a bright flash. Okay, that is how we're gonna get the lightning. Oh, spectacles. Maybe to protect our eyes. Okay, so this looks like our flash lamp. We have a whole setup here. Letter from Farmer Charles. Lady Arabella, these past weeks, I've been seeing lots of bright flashes coming from the back room of your house. It scares my cows immensely as they think a storm must be coming. My milk production has taken a hit because of this, and if you enjoy fresh milk in your morning cup of tea, I would advise you to keep the flashes to a minimum. Where are these cows? And how can they see the back room of my house? Like, honestly, I'm concerned. Oh, we got a key to the back terrace. I don't know where the back terrace is, but that's good. <laughs> and here we have some flash powder. Potassium and magnesium, two to one ratio. Potassium, magnesium, two to one ratio. Two potassium, one magnesium. Let's make a potion. Two potassium. And one magnesium. Perfect. We made a potion. And it's totally going to be safe. It's not going to, nothing bad's going to happen. Let's put that there. There's the flash powder. Close it. Okay, now we have to go get the actual, like, flower. Because <laughs> that's not going to do anything on its own. There we go. We have one more clue still to find, actually. Maybe we missed something out here. Oh, well, we definitely need the seed. That's a Fulgoria seed. It looks really cool. It looks like a little gemstone. 
Oh, a blurry photograph. Camera experiment one. I walked right past this. I was so excited to like go into a new room. I purchased a new camera and flash lamp to document my flowers. The picture looks a little blurry though. I'll have to investigate the camera settings. The picture is so dark, impossible to see the flowers. I can't believe how quickly I've run out of that incredibly expensive flash powder. I just made more. I'm very pleased with this picture. Looks like I'm getting the hang of the camera. <gasps> That's our parents. How fancy. Let's pot a fulguria. Give it a little water. <gasps> Harpsichord. Piano woman. We got another achievement. Okay, so let's take a picture. <gasps> yes. Beautiful, beautiful. We got it without finding all the clues. I don't even know where the other clue could have been. Fulgoria only grows during thunderstorms where the flashes of lightning provide the bright light the flower needs to bloom. Because of its dangerous growing conditions, not many people have witnessed this beauty. Yo, look at it, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, look at you. Okay, I think we've found everything in these rooms. We can go up the stairs now over here. See what's up here. Library hall, Oh, It has a fancy schmancy lock on it. Okay, we're gonna have to figure out the password. And then, oh, we're up on the balcony. Oh, uh, we can't get through that because it's blocked by the tree, of course. Okay, so in that case, we're gonna have to go back down. We're gonna have to figure out how to get in there for sure. But that's as far as we can go on this side until we progress. We do have that key to the back terrace. Oh, the back terrace. Oh, in the painting room. Can't go in the painting room though. Let's go to the back terrace. Nice. <gasps> Oh, it's beautiful out here. Locked from the other side. Are these orange trees? Tangerines? Oh, wow. Oh, those are the cows. I find it hard to believe that those cows can see the light over here, but I guess if it's like pitch black, maybe if the flash is bright enough. What a view though, hey? Okay, let's take this area by area. We have another potting station. Little tea set up. Half a sandwich. I had a sandwich for lunch too. Oh, this seat looks very comfortable. Just sit and watch the world go by. There's a book here. Flowering Plants of Great Britain. Okay, I think we have to go down below. I don't see anything up here. This looks promising. We have some more seeds. That's the ash bloom seed. Very cool. And then we have a seed log. A summary of some seeds I've gathered this year and the location I found them at. Okay, so this could potentially apply to other seeds you have to grow but specifically the ash plume was found in wistman's wood let's add that oh there's a second page of that so i think maybe i can add those photographs here yes there we go we completed this page i didn't realize there was a second second page so if this one was found in wistman's wood dartmoor poster i don't know how the dartmoor poster connects just yet but i'll figure it out one step at a time Oh, a letter. From Grace. My dear friend Arabella, a friend of mine visited the Americas and brought back a pair of fabulous gray squirrels. They're the latest trend. Are they real squirrels? They're the latest trend in garden decoration. All of my neighbors have sent for them as well. It was a great investment. The two squirrels have now started a big family and my garden is full of the darling little critters. Oh gosh, invasive species? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. One thing I did notice is that I haven't seen a red squirrel in my garden for some time now. Oh no! Oh no! How odd. You must visit soon and see the squirrels for yourself. Ever yours, Grace. Okay. Uh, poor red squirrels. They've been taken over. They've been replaced. Formal garden. Oh, she's a fancy garden. She's not an everyday garden. She's a formal garden. Locked from the other side. Okay. I can't wrap my head around the fact that there are people in the world that actually live in places like this. This is so beautiful. Another key to the kitchen. Sweet. We can go to the kitchen now. But what is this? Kitchen notes. Thursday. Jimmy broke another mortar. That boy really needs to learn how to grind spices without breaking down my kitchen. Lady Arabella may not be best pleased with me asking for a new one. The last mortar took years to be sort- Years to be sorted. She's so scatterbrained, always off on her fancy research trips. <gasps> How rude. I thought it meant like the mortar took like years to actually like be created or to arrive by like boat or something. I don't know, but it's because I took forever. So scatterbrained. Okay, shopping list, flower, 
eggs, milk, leeks, potatoes, carrots. I don't know if that's a clue or not. No, I don't think it is. That's not a clue, that's just lore. We're scatterbrained, apparently. Okay, so now we go back to the kitchen now that we have the key. By the way, you can sprint if you want to, or you can just stroll. The choice is yours. To the kitchen, I hope we can get a snack. I'm kind of hungry. So satisfying. Oh, wow, look at this kitchen. <gasps> wow. This is quite the kitchen. A mysterious symbol. Okay. Oh, okay. We have to make a certain weight, I guess. I'm sure there'll be a clue to figure out like exactly what we're supposed to do. Carrots. I'll have a carrot. We could open this. Okay. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Kindling. Dear lady, we received your letter applying to study botany at our College of Natural Sciences, along with your enclosed drawings. We do not at present and have never admitted women to study at the college. Botany is a <gasps> serious science conducted in laboratories and lecture halls. By all means, continue to pursue your hobby tending to your garden and domestic space where it may be appreciated. Positions at the college are reserved for serious scholars whose studies will go on to be well utilized. Therefore, with all politeness, we do not offer these valuable positions to amateurs that should otherwise be taken up by genuine academics. I hate John. I could not have, I could not have lived in the 1800s. I'd be throwing hands every day. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't last one day in the 1800s. I'm so triggered. Look, there's the broken mortar. Okay, we're gonna all breathe. Collectively, we're gonna breathe in. Him back out. It's okay. It's 2024 now. The history of Dartmoor. Oh, okay. Monthly lecture open to all society members. The professor will present how the moor was once covered in majestic forests and woods, how early settlers came to the area and cleared most of the trees for pasture using fire as their method of choice. Ugh. It promises to be a fascinating story of how the moorland we know and love today came into existence. Oh, interesting. Okay, add that to the clues. Hazel's priceless recipes for the home farm, workshop, and every department of human endeavor. <gasps> Roasted chestnuts. This simple recipe perfect to warm those cold nights. You can use any edible chestnuts that are easily foraged. The main difficulty with chestnuts is that they have a tough shell. Oh, the seed has a tough shell. I wonder if we have to crack the seed of the flower for it to grow. Uh, the main difficulty with chestnuts is that they have a tough shell, but luckily they're easy to crack open with the help of fire. Simply place the nuts in a pan above the fire and wait until you hear a pop. This means that your chestnuts are nicely roasted and ready to eat. Okay, I think that is a clue to tell us how to grow the ash plume. So we might have to cook the seed. Oh, something here too. Blessed in this kitchen by grace and holy light, may all those who enter find comfort and respite. Blessed is the hearth with laughter and with cheer. May the love shared here be held. Not me reading this. Hello, <laughs> forever dear. To those who serve the Lord, who seek their sanctuary, remember the year of construction, for this, friends, is the key. Right? Not a clue. We do have to do something with the weight. I feel like I don't have enough information yet. Oh. <laughs> to someone special. <gasps> Dearest Hazel. I picked you some roses from the garden to cheer you up. When you're done with your work in the kitchen, would you like to meet me for a cup of tea in the back garden? The pond is lovely this time of year. Mr. Bennett! Mr. Bennett is putting the moves on Hazel. The ancient oaks stand tall in Wistman's wood. Covered in moss, they withstood the test of time. Though none can tell the sorrows that did befell those trees in Wistman's wood. Okay, that's a clue. <gasps> Another duck. I like this one. I like ducks. Do you guys like ducks? I really like them. I think they're quite cute and funny. My favorite Animal Crossing villager is a duck. Fun fact, Molly. Oak logs, maple logs, cherry logs, birch logs. Ooh, I'll take one of each. The smokery. Okay, we're gonna be smoking stuff. Smoked food. Okay, that looks hot. Let's not touch it yet. Here's a book. Home smoking and curing. A home smokery, no big deal. The type of wood to use in your smokery is of great importance, though which one to pick depends entirely on your personal tastes and preferences. Burning wood from different types of trees produce different smoke aromas. 
This is due to the different chemical compositions in each type of smoke and has a great impact on the flavor of your smoked food. So in summary, choose your wood logs with care. So the seed has to, we learned that the seed has to be exposed to a certain smoke aroma, right? It was in this one, the Pyrophiles book, the clue I'm thinking about. Now we might have to go back and read that again to figure out which kind of forest. Oh, all the light bulbs are going off. And then we'll have to smoke the seed. Now I'm curious as to what is going on in here with these like weights and stuff. Like it's definitely about, you know, getting it to be a certain weight, but I don't think we have that information just yet. We will put a pin in that for now and come back to it. Let me come back and read Wistman's Wood, Becky Falls. Okay, hold on. Some pyrophiles only bloom when surrounded by smoke aromas from their natural habitat. So yeah, it has to match their natural habitat. Wistman Woods, covered in moss. The ancient oaks, the ancient oaks. We need the oak wood. This is so clever. I love this. Oak logs. Do I need to cut it? No, it's already cut. Sarah, it's already cut. Look at it. Use your eyes. Okay, so let's put the log in there. And then it'll have the aroma. Oh, we need to put the plant there. Okay, hold on. I don't know if we need to crack it. I feel like we need to crack it. Let me find the nearest potting station. Okay, we have a pot. We have soil. We have the ash plume. We have water. I mean, I don't know if it needs water or not, but let's go expose it. Oh, we need to roast it first. Yes. Crack. Yes. <gasps> yes, 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 yes. We germinated the seed. And now we have to bring it to the smokery. I don't know if I'll need another log or not, if it'll remember. But I will put the plant down here. We might need to get another one. I just want to, like, figure out all the steps before I went and potted the, the plant. You could try it again, though, you know? You can try it multiple times if you don't get it right the first time. <laughs> yeah! Oh my gosh. We did it, we did it. The ash bloom. And we've gotta add the smoking book there too, so we complete the page. We got all the clues, we got all the plants, we got all the pages. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that scared me. <laughs> gatehouse delivery. Let's go see what we what we have. Go to the gate, let's go to the gate. Gorgeous. Good thing we know where that is. We checked it out earlier. Here we are. Special delivery. Oh, a key to the orchard. Dear Lady Green, we are pleased to deliver a new key for your orchard gate. We hope you're enjoying the gate. Don't hesitate to visit us again should you need further metalwork or decoration for the manor. So now we can go to the orchard, which was on the left-hand side, I believe, of the property. Let's go check that out over here. Yes, it is here. The orchard. I am just loving this. <gasps> Chapter 3. Peculiar Petals. Two new plants. Oh, gorgeous. Oh my gosh, look at this place. Are you kidding me? I want to move here. Okay, what do we have? Oh my gosh, the little piggy. Oh my gosh, is there a dog? Is there a dog somewhere? I said I needed 17 dachshunds. Nursery rhyme. The wolf glove. High on the mountaintop, so steep, grows a flower that's hard to keep. Its petals delicate and bright, whistling in the wind with all their might. The mountaineers who climb up high listen for the whistle as they try to find their way amidst the snow and reach the summit cheeks aglow. With every step, they hear it loud, the wolf gloves howl clear and proud, guiding them through paths unknown to reach the summit and call it home. Okay, so from this we get high altitude, cold, and the snow, whistling wind. I'm surprised there would be um, a flower that could survive in that kind of condition. So let's see what we have up next under Peculiar Petals. Pixie Tears. This flower is closely associated with orchards. And Wolf Glove. Oh, this is the Wolf Glove because that's the nursery rhyme. This small flower has long tubular petals. How interesting. Okay, let's add the nursery rhyme clue here. I love the name Pixie Tears. Dear niece. Oh, this is a letter I wrote to my niece. I've gathered a selection of my cherished toys. Oh, it's not a dog toy. I mean, I have a stuffed pig, but I just it was on the ground. There were two balls next to it. I thought maybe it was for a dog. Among them, my beloved piggy. I highly recommend the nursery rhymes. They are charming as well as educational, though I'll take no offense should they put your little one straight to sleep. With all my affections, Auntie Arabella. Our niece is having a baby, it sounds like. Oh, excellent. Another potting station. Oh. Oh 
my gosh, this area is huge. <gasps> Another book. The Heritage Orchard. Endangered apple varieties? I didn't know there were endangered apple varieties. Apples, apples. Oh, this one has like some little bumps on it. Cider making and apple blending. Ooh, okay. Don't know where this is going, but I'm here for it. I'm guessing this might be for the other flower that's like related to apple orchards for some reason. So let's add that to pixie tears, just based on my suppositions. Oh, there's more apples over here. Oh, those are apples. I want this apple in real life. Look at it, it looks so delicious. Or poison. Oh, cider apples. Knobbly russet, dabinette, fox whelp, brown snout. A cat's head, Lord Peckover. Oh, that's Merlin's Mist. Very nice. Okay, so something's gonna come into play with that. We will add that to the clues there. More apples over here. There's so many apples. Oh, we're gonna be making, we're gonna be blending an apple and then using the, the juice to like water it. Water the flower. That's cool. Okay. We don't know which one yet though, but we'll be back. We'll be back. Let's continue. I barely, I didn't even finish exploring this area. I just got in here and I want to see if the door would open or not. Over here. Dearest Arabella, how are you getting on in your garden? I hope it's not getting to be too much for you on your own these days. Our mutual friend mentioned you have been struggling to germinate the ash plume. Have you tried making sure there's fresh compost in the pot? Stubborn seeds often need that to grow. Um, I figured it out. I had to cook the seed. I'll visit you sometime and perhaps I can find a way to crack the seed for you. No, no, I got it myself. I can show you the book I've been working on at the same time. Oh, another Charles. Or is that the same Charles? So many Charleses. Oh, notes on soil additives. Sometimes I need to add extra nutrition to the soil. I have found the following amounts to work best with my different pots. Oh, wow. That's something I'm going to have to reference if I need the info. I'll not be memorizing that. Oh, we got the pixie tear seed. Looks like a little bean. I'm not going to add this clue yet because I don't know which flower it's for. Oh my gosh, what a long walk. Let's go this way next. Oh, wow. Okay, Um, let's open this. Okay, foxglove, red campion, primrose, hyacinth, spring dance shrub, pixie tears. I need that one. Well, I don't know what that's, oh, the sketch, the sketch, the sketch. Look at the sketch. This is what it looks like under the microscope. Okay, okay. Let's add that as a clue. Tincture of iodine. Perfect for preparing microscope slides. Chloroplasts. In the world of plants, the sun is the ultimate source of energy. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Oh, sorry, that was my grade seven through 12 biology kicking in. Chloroplasts, small organelles inside the cells of a plant are responsible for capturing the light from sun and converting it into sugar through photosynthesis. However, not all plants have chloroplasts. Some plants rely on organic matter for their energy and do not photosynthesize. They've lost their chloroplasts over time and have instead adapted to obtain energy by absorbing sugars through their roots. It's therefore recommended to add a certain amount of sugar to the soil when cultivating these particular plants. That picture looks like the shape of this, but it doesn't have... Yeah, see, this one does not have the chloroplasts. So, because it doesn't have chloroplasts, we need to basically have it absorb sugar through their roots. So, we're supposed to be adding sugar to the soil. Got it. Okay, let's add that here. Chloroplast book. This is so cool. <gasps> Orchard mosaic. History of England. Okay. Priest holes. Like a church? Back in the Middle Ages, during the reign of Queen Elizabeth, all Catholics were persecuted by law. Therefore, some households built secret rooms in case they needed to hide a priest that was visiting their family home. Many of these so-called priest holes were designed and built by Nicholas Owen. Only the owner of the house and Nicholas himself knew about the location. Because of this, it is thought that there may be many undiscovered priest holes throughout England to this day. So we probably have one in our house then. That's what it's telling us. Thank you for inviting me to your botany manor last Monday. They said the thing. As a historian, I found it wonderful to see an authentic medieval manor, especially one as beautiful as yours. I apologize again for not being able to locate the priest hole in your house. Oh, <laughs> although I'm convinced they exist and we'll find it one day. It won't be easy. They tend to be hidden well and sometimes require elaborate mechanisms to be opened. Ooh, I wonder if it has to do with that weight thing in the kitchen room. 
That's the only thing I've seen so far, unless it's like this or something. But this is outside. I feel like it would be inside. Honestly, this manor's so big, I feel like you don't need a priest hole to hide a priest. They could just hide somewhere on the property. In a shrub or something, in a bush. <laughs> I've received your request for repairs to the roof of your garden tower. Alas, I must confess that I'm not the man to undertake this task. It may have escaped your notice that the tower in your orchard is known to locals as the Turbulent Tower. It is believed that a poltergeist dwells within its walls. Wait, imagine this is all actually a, a horror game and it's like the biggest plot twist of all time in the cozy gaming sphere. Legend says that the spirit is evil and brings ferocious winds upon anyone- Wind! No, that's good. We need wind. Upon anyone who dares enter the tower. I don't want to provoke the wrath of this ghost and I advise you to refrain from meddling with the tower. So we're gonna meddle with the tower. Thanks, Willie. Um, we literally have to provoke an evil spirit to grow our next plant. Cool. I love that for us. That's gonna be so great. Just so great. Okay, this is the tower. Are we ready for ghosts? Um, let's see what's over here first. Oh, potting station. Oh, and this will connect back. I believe. Oh, no, it won't. This is a whole new area. Oh, no, no, it does. It dies. It dies. See? We're back here. Just had to open two doors. Another key. To the painting room. Awesome. As you can see, the staircase of the orangery collapsed in your absence. I have already written to the builder in the hope that he wants to sort it out, though as you know, he can be difficult to pin down. I do apologize if this is getting in the way of your research. I don't suppose you could find another way into the bottom level. Okay, so the stairs just casually collapsed. It was probably the ghost. Honestly, now that we know they're here with us. <gasps> oh, cute. Aries? We made it to the Alps. We're so sad that you couldn't join us this time, but we understand you're busy creating your herbarium. We are dedicated to the craft. Yesterday, we were lost on a hike until suddenly we heard a strange whistling tune. We followed the sound and soon enough, we discovered it was coming from a tiny flower. Oh, if only you had been there to tell us what kind of flower it was. Your loving friend always natty. That's the flower I'm trying to grow right now. Okay, so the Alps. Whistle, wind, mountains, pictures all coming together. Let's add that to, that's the wolf glove. So let's add that clue. Oh, envelope with stamp. I think that belongs here as well. Letter about the Alps. Letter from the builder. The letter from the builder was the one about the ghost. So that goes with the wolf glove. Let's go in here. We might have to go to the painting room as well. Move up. What is this? Anemometer, but it's broken. Okay. I definitely know what an anemometer is, obviously. Not a clue. Got it. It's just broken. <gasps> Wait, I'm going up? I want to go back down. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared of the ghost. <laughs> Let's go to the painting room, which I think was just through here. Nice little shortcut. Yes. Just a casual painting room. No big deal. It's like a studio. Beautiful. Oh, this is a floor plan. Oh yeah, we couldn't get into the library yet. Servants hall, kitchen, lower floor. Oh, the room with the little scale in it was the servants hall. Attic. Okay, I'll, I guess that could come in handy. Meadow Orchids Research Team 1862. Professor John Montague. Oh, and me, Arabella. Dear Ms. Green, your research proposal on the structure of coastal plants was of quaint interest. We have no plans to fund a small project like this, but perhaps if you're set on botanical fieldwork, you might assist Professor Montague in his work on British meadow orchids. I'm sure your natural aptitude for domestic duties would be much appreciated. Might I also recommend John Lindley's book, Ladies Botany, Ladies Botany, or a familiar introduction to the study of the natural system of botany. It's an elementary book for unscientific readers, and one I have heard is a suitable amusement for ladies such as yourself, being about a mother who wishes to teach her children about plants. Respectfully? No, you don't get to use the word respectfully, because the level of disrespect in that letter? Mm-mm. Okay, time for another breathing exercise, everyone. <laughs> Flower painting in watercolor. Beautiful. I was wondering if I could join Mr. Bennett into town later this afternoon to place an order for a new kitchen scale. Oh, 
The one we have is rather ancient, and I'm afraid it's not suitable for measuring flour to make my delicious scones. If you could let me know your decision before the afternoon, that'd be lovely. Ooh, a little date? Okay, so that has to do with the scale. Symbology. Oh, and the symbol. A study wherein the discerning reader will find a history of the use of religious and folkloric symbols throughout the art of the world. Yes. Agnes Day. That's the symbol. Agnes Day. That's the one. What does it mean? I don't know yet. A discarded poem. My dearest Arabella, in gardens fair, you grace the scene, a flower rare. Your presence beams with radiant light, a lily's charm so pure and white. Your hands like petals, soft and fine, in tender touch, a love divine, and in your eyes a brilliant glows, a brilliance glows, as daisies fair and springs repose. Oh, how I long to have you near, to cherish you, my heart sincere, like roses freshly cut, you'd be the trophy of my home with glee. Okay. No wonder it's discarded. Okay. Paint. Let's paint. Am I gonna remember that that's called Agnes Day? Let's go back there to the scale thing. There was this religious poem. Wait, wait, wait. The symbols on this too. The year of construction. The year of construction. The year of construction. Eighteen. The year of construction. The year of construction. Constructed in fifteen ninety three. Oh my gosh, I feel, <laughs> I feel so clever when I, I figure something out. 1593. <gasps> so cool. History sleuth. We found the priest hideout. Wow, this is quite, um, I thought it was just going to be one little box. It's quite the hideout. This is also like a fire hazard. Okay, what's this? Letter from priest. Thou hast ventured mightily in granting me refuge within these walls, and for such favor I remain eternally indebted to thee. The cunning of little John from the window to the wall in his establishments of the sanctuary doth inspire awe. That rhymed, right? A saint he is to our brethren and sisters who have sought refuge from the harsh rule of Queen Elizabeth and King James. Pray extend my gratitude unto thy cook for the sustenance provided, a welcome respite from Brother Michael's oft-repeated fare of looks and pota leeks and potatoes, but also probably serving looks. With the most earnest of thanks, I entr entreat, trust, in tr for that, this, in trust, that this missive shall not <laughs> mark our final communion, I can't read the font, <laughs> and that our faith may endure unbroken. Okay, don't know if that's a clue or not. Leeks and potatoes? Am I reading into it? I don't know. <gasps> but a duck. A tufted duck. Find all the ducks. I love them. This bed looks terribly uncomfortable. Okay, and it goes... <gasps> it goes to down here! How did they not know that? Is this like solid... Co oh, interesting. Okay. Lady Mountaineers Club. First outing, 1858. Wait, mountaineers? Mountains. Not a clue. <laughs> I thought I'd check. Oh, medallions. Souvenir coins. La Tour Eiffel. In Paris. What about this one? Matterhorn, first summit, 1865. Oh, this is the Aries one. From Switzerland. Gran Paradiso, Italia. Oh, this is gonna come in. We're good. This is gonna come into play here. Innsbruck. I've been to Innsbruck before. Okay, so let me read this. The Society for Botanical Science meets every second and fourth Wednesday from six o'clock at the assembly rooms in Stroud. A prospective applicant must be supported by three existing gentlemen of the society, along with evidence or research showing his dedication to the advancement of the science of botany. Widows of existing fellows receive honorary membership to attend annual social events. This month's lecture is on the importance of laboratory investigation. I need to sit for a moment. Look how pretty this room is. The poor staircase, though. I don't know what happened here. Probably the ghost. Oh, seeds. That's the wolf glove seed. Coin collection. 
I think that's going to go with this because there's some that are um, to do with mountains. Oh, more coins. That looks like a mountain. Mount Ventoux. That also looks like a mountain. It's literally called Mount Alpine Souvenir. Mont Blanc. Oh, these are all mountains. Oh, because we go mountaineering. Oh, every time we go mountaineering, we get a souvenir coin. Okay, what does this say? Today marks the beginning of an intriguing adventure as I join Professor John Montague, his wife Anne Montague, and fellow botanist Robert Brown on our field trip to study, right, because I wasn't good enough to do my own thing, to study British meadow orchids. Everyone's enthusiasm for the subject is infectious. Today, Professor Montague gathered all of us to examine a southern marsh orchid, though upon arrival I noticed it had a much more hooded appearance and could be a new species entirely. When I pointed this out, Professor Montague laughed and explained he was simply testing us. So perhaps this is the plant in question that we're growing. Okay, there was that picture of them um, on their little trip. It is the only way back out of here if I go through here? Wait, am I trapped? No, I can't. Oh, repair it, yes. I thought I was about to be trapped. <laughs> yeah, that'll suffice. Okay, shortcut. I need to go back to the painting room for a second. There was this. The research team, Meadow Orchids. No, it doesn't give us any information about where they went on their expedition there. Okay. I think this one's for the pixie. Okay, we have all the clues for the pixie tears. So why don't we try to do that one before we get uh, the rest of the clues for the other one. So, soil. Pixie tears. Give it a water. Propagated. Ooh, it's like a white sprout. So then I'm going to put this in here. And then we have to mash up an apple. So I think it's this pot that we're using. So 97 grams. Okay, 97 grams of sugar we need. I'm going to try to do like low acidity because I feel like, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like it shouldn't be acidic. But I could be wrong. Uh, the knobby russet, the dabinet, and the brown snout will all add up to the 97 grams based off of what's here of sugar. Knobby russet, dabinet, brown snout. Knobby russet, dabinet, brown snout. Got it. It's the one with the little bumps, the one that's like a sunset, and the one with the little dirt on the bottom. So the one with the bumps, the one that's like a sunset. And the one with the dirt on the bottom. Let's see if this works. Use press. <gasps> Did it work? Oh my gosh, the butterflies! It did work! Oh my gosh, that's so exciting! We got the pixie tears! The pixie tears no longer contains chloroplasts, which are organelles responsible for photosynthesis. Instead, the pixie tears obtains sugar through their roots, which it commonly finds in the apples from orchards. I love that! We grew another flower! I love how the butterflies came out for it, too. That one was fun. I liked that one. Oh, look, there's butterflies everywhere. Okay, so we have two more clues we need to find for this other flower. It says they're in the orangery. There's some clues here. So the first one is the tower wind research. So we did some tests to see, oh, interesting, okay. Different wind speeds on different floors depending on how the windows in the tower are open. So it's definitely not as easy to summon as a ghost as I thought it would be. <laughs> uh, we gotta figure out what kind of wind speed we need. Maybe it'll tell us in here. Mountaineer's Guide to Alpine Exploration. Okay, this seems promising. Be sure to wear the correct gear when climbing. Uh, wind speed and pressure in the Alps by location. I need to double check the location based on the coin. This one. Weishorn, Switzerland. So let's see where that lies on here. Weishorn is a wind speed of 40. Pressure 1020. Okay. 
Wind speed of 40. Oh, we have it open to this page. So test five of six. So we have to open the first window only halfway and then fully open the third and fourth windows, leaving the others shut. Okay, let's see if we can, if we can do that. And then we have to go to the fourth floor. Okay, which is where we will end up. So let's take our wolf glove into the tower. Now let's go up. And this one, we just want to open half. And then we want to go up and leave this window closed. But then the next two, we're going to like completely open up. If I'm remembering correctly. So open up. And then we're going to go up <laughs> one more level. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What an interesting looking flower. We did it, you guys. We did it. We grew the wolf glove. And we found all the clues. The wolf glove grows in Mount Wisehorn, where the weather is just right. When the wind hits its tubular petals, a howling sound can be heard. Mountaineers are familiar with this flower and use it to navigate on foggy days. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Okay, let's go down. Oh, we have another delivery. Let's go see what we get. Let's go see what's there this time. Let me down. I want to go see. Oh my gosh, feels like it takes forever to get down this thing. <gasps> okay, what do we have? Oh my gosh, a letter from our sister. Dear sister, I'm so glad to hear you've returned safely from your travels. While you were away, I changed the code for the library door lock each time I visited as I know some of grandmother's valuable items are kept in the secret vault. Ooh. The new code for the door is the three initials of my name to make it easy for you to remember. I hope we can meet soon. I look forward to hearing all about your adventures, your loving sister Elizabeth. Why didn't you stop by? Why did she just leave a letter? But okay, we have to figure out how we can go into the library. I want to ring the bell just for fun. <laughs> well, that's cool. I'm excited to go check out the library. Uh, so we can figure out the initials of her name based on the family tree. For sure. You can look there first. I also just noticed that it looks like both of our parents have passed away. And another thing I noticed is that it actually looks like our mother passed away when our sister was born. So we have Elizabeth Ann Green, E-A-G. I'm so excited to see what the library looks like. Okay. Um, e. A. G. No? Oh, but I don't wonder if perhaps Elizabeth put it as like her married name. So let's try it with the H. Try that. Yes. Lock picker. We opened it. Open the door. Ooh. Oh, there's many ways to go in here. The modern methods of teaching. We can have a seat. I haven't taken a seat in a while. Although, I don't know if this would be my preferred place to sit. We also have a thank you card from Olive. Dear Lady Green, thank you kindly for the flower books you sent for my daughters. To this day, they still show an interest in learning more about plants and painting. I'm keen that my daughters have access to a good education, so I hope you don't mind me putting it upon you that you might be able to teach them somehow. Your dedication and knowledge seem so rare and inaccessible elsewhere for young girls like mine. I hope you'll consider my proposal. Sincerest regards, Olive. Oh my gosh, I would love to teach them. The girl's got to learn. Okay, so we have a study, which is locked. But this door, we can go through. Okay, this looks cozy. <gasps> Botanical allies. Four new plants added. Oh my goodness. Well, would you look at this? I just know there are so many puzzles in here. This library is gorgeous. Look at the, 
the stained glass. Wow, it's huge. Imagine having this in your home. And then we also have stairs here. Oh, to the second floor of the library. Wow. This is incredible. Lots of little nooks and crannies too. Oh, you guys, this is so gorgeous. I think this is the perfect place to wrap up today's gameplay. I hope you all enjoyed it so very much. I've had the just best time with this game so far. I do want to keep playing. The puzzles are so fun and satisfying to complete. They're very clever. They are challenging, yet not overly frustrating. Um, just really, really lovely game so far. I love the story too. I love getting to know Arabella and what it was like for her to live in these times as a woman in science, uh, where that was not really a thing, you know, that wasn't supported or accepted in society. So this has been just such a journey. I want to continue it for sure. But I hope you all enjoyed today's gameplay and I hope you enjoy exploring Botany Manor if you decide to go ahead and pick up the game. If you would be so kind as to go ahead and shine the lovely like button if you enjoyed this first look at Botany Manor. Uh, it really does help. I appreciate it so much. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all and until next time, take care.